What it do, Dream Team? Welcome back. Here we are with another reaction video. Could China invade Australia? The land down under? Is it possible? Let's find out. Before we do, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. Let's hop right in. An alarming warning tonight that Australia could be facing the very real threat of going to war with China within three years. There is at least a 50% chance that Australia will be drawn 50? into a war over Taiwan within five years. In recent wow. months, Australia has been bombarded with terrifying headlines about the threat of invasion from China, with pundits warning of cities falling, missiles raining, and all the restaurants in the city being forced to stay open as late as the ones in Chinatown. <laughs> we even had a candidate for Prime Minister running ads laying out the exact airstrip that China was going to use to invade this country. Australia could not repel military aircraft if they landed from carriers offshore. Even though that airstrip was all the way out here and oh, was also part owned by the man warning about that airfield. But oh. perhaps he has a point. China boasts a military that is 2 million plus people strong, yeah. as opposed to Australia's, which is about 80,000. And their name outnumbers Australia by a factor of nine. So given these overwhelming numbers, could China actually conquer Australia? And if they could, how would it happen? I don't think they could, because they uh, China's in a treaty with UK and America, right? Who would come to, I mean, not China, Australia is, uh, UK and America would come to their defense if attacked, correct? So for the sake of the argument, let's imagine a scenario where Xi Jinping ignores Taiwan and instead resolves to invade Australia. Okay. After all, who doesn't love Tim Tams? Everybody. And on that assumption, we let's all actually them. take a look at how all of this would actually unfold. Hmm. Now, ideally, if you're invading a country, you try and do so with the element of surprise catching your enemy off guard before they've got into their defensive positions. For sure. Now, modern surveillance makes this difficult at the best of times, and it means that for China, an airborne landing is probably the best option. Planes, paratroopers, you get the idea. But here is where China hits its first issue, and it's a problem we'll come back to again and again throughout this video. Australia is really bloody far from China. Exactly. Even just the distance from Hainan, the most logical departure out of China for this assault, to Darwin, here, is a staggering 2,700 miles. Jesus! That's further than New York to San Francisco. And this distance limits China's options for airlift capacity, as mm. whilst they currently have 284 transport planes, most of these designed for missions over Taiwan. In reality, the Xiaom Y-20s will probably be the only ones with the range required for this operation, and China mm. only has around 58 of those on hand. Oh, company. wow. So they'll have to fly all the way from China which at this range means that China is going to need to carry out mid-air refuelings with tanker aircraft. And here's where the first bottleneck lies, as China only has access to eight YY-20s suitable for long-range refuelling missions like this. What that means is that China could only launch two to four transport planes at a time for a drop at this distance. Well, oh, they to get their planes back. And as anyone who's watched this channel before knows, supply is what makes or breaks an army. So yes. if China wants their troops to actually have bullets sitting in their guns when they land, they'll need to transport supplies to the front as well, including ammunition, medical supplies, communications gear, vehicles, and so on. And things get even worse from there if Indonesia doesn't cooperate with the plan. Mm. You see, despite doing a lot of trade with China, Indonesia and China have a tense relationship with bubbling tensions over territory in the South China Sea. And oh, wow. if Indonesia denied China overflight rights for their operation, well, then the Chinese Air Force would be forced to detour all the way out here, past the Solomon ah, Islands, lengthening that route to over 6,500 miles oh each way. My God. That's a distance comparable to going from San Francisco to Kiev. And this would make China's refueler problem even worse, thereby cutting the number of planes China would have available even further. You could also say goodbye to any element of surprise, as Australia and its allies are pretty likely to notice all of China's transport planes yeah. and refuelers congregating around a few runways in Hainan. Big time. Okay, let's say Indonesia does give China a pass through its territory, and Australia and the US are caught off guard. For China, the key question is then where to invade. Now, they'll probably want to place their troops as close as possible to China, which means that Australia's northern regions emerge as the most logical targets. Okay. Even though this invasion map also lines up nearly perfectly 
with the distribution of our nearly bulletproof saltwater crocodiles. <laughs> But from here, yeah, of our nearly bulletproof saltwater crocodiles, uh, it it just geographically it just doesn't seem possible for China to catch Australia off guard and be able to invade Australia. Three main options emerge. The first of which is here in Broome. However, whilst Broome does possess a decent airfield and a fairly active port. This remote location poses significant logistical challenges for an advancing army, as we'll unpack a bit further in a moment. The second option would be here in Cairns, Queensland, a territory often equated to the Florida of Australia. And whilst it would give China a place to land, it doesn't have the strategic or economic value to it that the other two options do. Plus, plopping your troops down here would also mean you'd be forced to live with Queenslanders. <laughs> the third option would be here in Darwin the capital of the Northern Territory. Now, Darwin is not the largest city in Australia, but it's an attractive target for China because it's home okay. to Australia's Northern Command. Plus, south of Darwin, there are a few important strategic targets, such as Tyndall Air Base, a pivotal launch point for long-range bombers that threaten China's presence in the South China Sea, as well as Pine Gap, located near Alice Springs, which is a sprawling intelligence facility crucial for US operations, especially missile targeting. So for all these reasons, Darwin would likely be the initial invasion target. But remember, we only have a limited airlift capacity for this range. Mm. And by crunching the numbers, we quickly realize that even under the most optimistic circumstances, with Indonesia on board, China would only actually be able to deploy around 500 troops daily. So the question is, could 500 Chinese soldiers take Darwin on day one? No. Well, it'd be pretty tough, considering that no. the city serves as a base for HMAS Kunawara, Larrakia yeah. Barracks, and Robinson yeah. Barracks and is fortified with the presence of the 1st Armoured Regiment, equipped with M1 Abrams tanks, the 5th Motorised oh Battalion, God. the 1st Battalion, and two regiments of combat support, as well as the Royal Artillery Regiment and various aviation regiments, with additional air support also coming from Tyndall. On top of that, they'd also have to deal with the 2500 Marines stationed here at the moment, as the US maintains a routine rotation through Darwin as well. So invading Darwin would also likely mean drawing the US into the war as well. In fact, those 500 Chinese okay. soldiers would be even outnumbered by the number of local security guards here in Darwin, who in actual fact have probably even seen more combat than the Chinese Airborne Corps has, simply having worked on cheap cheese <laughs> I, I love the little like funny remarks he throws in. It is not just like a serious video where he's basically explaining geographically it's basically impossible for China to attack Australia and catch it off guard and to invade. Uh, couldn't couldn't happen. Couldn't do it. Uh, but he's also throwing in the absolutely hilarious remarks in there that keeps the video entertaining as well. So I love the way he does this. But okay, let's say China wins the battle for Darwin. What happens okay. next? Perhaps a bold move south to remove the threat of Tyndall Air Base. But traversing the Australian landscape presents oh. its own set of challenges. You see, most intercity connections in Australia are characterized by expansive open terrains and single lane highways. However, whilst this vast openness might be incredibly scenic, it also makes satellite detection and aerial targeting ridiculously easy. Something that, that in this scenario, sense. the US and Australia would be more than happy to demonstrate to the Chinese forces. Just the geography in this region itself also removes any chance of surprise. As you see, whilst usually you can never quite be sure where your enemy is about to strike, in Australia, once you're on the highway, we kind of know exactly where you're headed. <laughs> and you can probably easily resupply that area whilst you make the long journey there. To explain, let's say you arrive here. If you take the road south, well, then we know you're heading for Tyndall and Pine Gap. If you take the road west, well, then we know the objective is clearly the mines in Western Australia or go east, okay. and we'll know you're using Apple Maps and Australian internet. And remember that- <laughs> Go east and we'll know you're using Apple Maps and Australian internet. <laughs> On top of all of this, Darwin, whilst a significant capture, is still a very isolated city, with the nearest major strategic city being Perth, located oh nearly 2,500 miles away leaving us plenty of time for local forces to begin preparing defenses yeah. and get in some target practice. But I can hear you saying, well, can't China's Navy help with all this? Can't its aircraft carriers and ships help with the supply problems as they push down the highway? Well, remember back to our first rule of invading Australia. 
So unless you're going to have ships that are already here with another convoy on the way, that distance means it will likely take up to three weeks for the supplies to catch up. Jesus. Meaning that the soldiers that China landed on day one may be waiting quite a while for the help to arrive. Yeah. And burning through their original ammunition and supplies within just a few days, which as we know, is a bit of a problem. You see, the just Chinese bit, Navy is designed little. to operate near its own coastline, usually within the Taiwan Strait or the South China Sea, where they enjoy the protective umbrella of missile defense and anti-aircraft batteries from the mainland. So operating in Australian waters would leave the Chinese Navy comparatively pretty exposed and a mighty tempting target for the US Navy. Also, the Australian Navy isn't anything to sneeze at either, as Australia prides itself on having a robust naval force, primarily stationed in cities like Perth, Melbourne, and Sydney. And if there was an invasion, these fleets could be swiftly moved in, being likely interspersed within maritime choke points like the Strait of Lombok, the Torres Strait, or the Timor Sea, all of which would buy us just enough time until our insurance policy rocks up. Cried. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know it's uh, you know it's a wrap. As much money as America spend on defense budget and the military, you know you're done for once, once they come through. But uh, you, I mean, I don't even think they're going to need uh, the U.S. From what I've seen in this video, it's like those 80,000 should be plenty just because it's going to be geographically so hard for China to get there and be, not be detected. Down there. So there you have it. Despite what this military genius might have you believe, invading Australia successfully would require you to maintain the element of surprise, which is virtually unattainable. You'd have to yeah. get their invasion troops all the way to Australia, despite the shortage of transport aircraft and the aircraft to refuel those transport aircraft. They'd need to get Indonesia on side, even though they threatened to invade them. They need to take the city of Darwin, somewhat outnumbered, and then advance another casual two and a half thousand miles through the desert yeah, nah, before they can man. finally take the capital and realize how boring our capital really is. <laughs> and they'd have to achieve this all while their naval resupply is extremely vulnerable. So if China wants to carry out a costly invasion and destroy their military doing so, they might as well stick to invasions closer to their own home. Exactly. As the invasion of Australia is frankly fanciful. And to be honest, hardly worth it as they kind of already have our money anyway. So China would have a pretty hard time taking Australia, but there is another island a little closer to China that they would have a much easier time with occupying. No, it's not the one you're thinking of. So if you want to learn more about that, click the box here. Yeah, it's, I mean, so China just, I mean, can't do it. You can't do it, China. It's not possible. Can't invade Australia. Not today. Uh -uh. But that's all we got for that video. Absolutely loved it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that, though, make sure you check out this video. I think you'll enjoy it as well. It's your boy, d -Neil. Out.